Good morning everyone, Deanne here. I just wanted to come on and do a video to show you guys how I made my windmill ornaments. Um, this is the first one that I made. And the, um, the blades are made out of chipboard. You can use cereal boxes or whatever kind of box to recycle. And if it's too thin, you could just glue two pieces together after you've cut it. So it's that. And I use a, a skewer, say that fast. <laughs> I used a skewer and some circle, chipboard circles and a chipboard gear. And these are little pearls that I painted with silver paint. So, and then the hole in the top so you can hang it. So that was my first one that I made and I did spatter it with white paint. I, I like how that looks. And the second one I made, I put on the back of the Dollar Tree um, house and I have two more and they say home sweet home. So this one has one more blade. So I think I'm going to go with the two, three, four, five, six, seven blades. And I still haven't done the, the Christmas side yet. Haven't decided what I want to do yet. So that's that. Let me get that out of the way. All right. Just let me take a sip here and we'll get started. <laughs> All right, got to wet the whistle, right? Okay, so how to make the blade. It's very, very easy. You just need a ruler, a piece of chipboard or something, you know, sturdy. So once you cut it out, you're gonna use it as your template. So don't make it out of paper. It'll just warp after tracing it a few times. Let me see, I have my measurements right down. Uh, Okay, so to make this, I'm gonna use a Sharpie marker. You can use whatever you want. You're gonna make, you're just gonna draw a line, a one and a half inch line. So here's one and a half. Just mark that on your board. And then you're gonna turn it on the side. Oops, sorry about that. And you're gonna line up the center of your line and do a three quarter inch, I'm sorry, half inch, I changed that, a half inch line. So you have a quarter on each side, draw that. And then on the other end, you're gonna do a one inch. So you're gonna put the half inch mark right in the center of the line you drew. You're gonna draw a one inch line, that. And then all you have to do is connect the ends of your two lines like this. Just line it up. And that <laughs> got away from me. This. And that's all you have to do. And then you cut it out. And that is your template for your blades. See? Let me write that down and then I'll hold it still for you. So that's half inch. This is one inch. And then this line is one and a half. Like this. So <clears throat> let me hold this for you so you can see. Okay. So that's how you make your template. And you're gonna cut it out, which I already did. That's my template. I actually, I practiced my paint on the back of it already. So that is that. And then you're going to take a piece of the chipboard, whatever you're using, and you're gonna paint it gray. Most people start with silver and then add gray. I like to add the silver on top of the gray. I, I don't know, I just like the way it looks. You can do it however you want. You can do silver and then gray. Um, <clears throat> but you want to use um, a gray, and then you want to use a regular paintbrush. You don't want to use a sponge brush because you want you want the lines in there so that when you dry brush the silver and the rust color over top of it, it gives you a nice dimension um, or a nice pattern. Sorry. <laughs> Let me see. I don't know if you can see that. 
might be able to see right there, those little lines, all those lines. So it looks like the metal's been worked. So now, once you trace it on the back and cut them all out, I'm using eight, um, seven, eight, no, seven. <laughs> I'm going to use seven. You're going to line them up and keep them the same direction. Get this out of the way. And the first thing you're going to want to do is take your silver paint. Um, you can use whatever paint uh, silver you like. I have uh, this silver, the metallic silver you could use. I have this from uh, Joanne Fabrics. It's nice and thick. And then I have this one from Walmart. And it's a really good price. So I'm going to try this one and see how it does. I haven't tried it yet, but it's nice and creamy. So I'm working on a glass surface. I'm just, oh yeah, that's nice and thick. <laughs> I'm just going to put it right onto the glass. Get these out of the way. I don't know about you guys, but I need a lot of room to work. Just keep that up to the side. And you're going to take a toothbrush, an old, old toothbrush like these. This, I forgot to clean that one out when I was done. <laughs> um, so I'm going to dip this into the silver. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just going to rub it in there really good. Just really get in there good with it. And then I'm going to dab it off onto a paper towel. So I really don't want to get crazy with it. Then you're going to brush the silver on with your toothbrush. But you're going to want to leave some of the gray behind. I don't know if you guys, if you guys can see that. You're just brushing it so it looks like brushed metal. And you're going to get it on your finger doing this. But that's okay because when you clean a brush, you can wash your nails off with it. <laughs> Add a little bit more brush. You want to be a little rough with it so you can really get it. Like that. And you're not putting a whole lot on so it dries really fast. Um, you can go back and put a second coat on if you feel like you, oops, if you feel like it needs more. I'm going to do the whole process. So this might be a long video, so feel free to um, fast forward so you don't have to watch paint dry, literally. So, okay. That is... Let's see that. Get a little bit of shine to it and still doll spots. So this should be dry pretty fast, kind of. All right, so I'm going to move right into the rust. Now the rust, I like to use burnt umber, but I don't have any left. So I kind of mixed my own rust color up. What I did was I used the Apple Barrel Nutmeg color. And this light brown, um, this is from Walmart. And I just kind of mixed them together. No certain amount, I was just mixing away. Let me get these out of the way. I put this over so it wouldn't dry. So I still have a little bit left there. And that's the color that I came up with. I'm pretty happy with it. Make sure there's no. And you're going to do the same thing, but you're just going to hit the edges lightly. And then the same thing on both ends. Then you're going to pick one side. Like do here and here. You're going to pick one side to brush up. Don't do both sides because only one side's really going to technically be rusted because of the way they're angled. So that's why you want to keep everything in a row and do them all at the same time so they match up. I messed up the other day. That's why I'm redoing this video. <laughs> I grabbed uh, a few from another project and I had done the rest the opposite direction. So if you're doing a bunch of these, do yourself a favor and make them all the same direction. All right, let's see. 
And I'm just going to lightly brush up, just like a little flick. Like that. And you can always go back in and add more. And do all these first. They don't have to be perfectly done the same because, you know, rust is, has its own mind. <laughs> it's not all going to be exactly the same. And if you think it's too much, you can go back in with your gray and silver and um, add some more over top of it and redo it. Or just, you know, take a little bit away. But I like to use the paintbrush because it's more messy and uneven. See, like that one's a little too much. One more. All right, so now let's get them all going the same way again. They're all facing down. And my nail is broke, so it keeps flipping back and forth. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to pick which side we want. <clears throat> I'm going to do the right side on all of them. I'm just going to do the exact same thing as I've been doing. And I'm just going to flip it or flick it kind of like this. You can put as much as you want on there. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a little bit. That one has a little more. I'm going to put a little more on this side. There we go. That's better. One more paint. All right. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I might go back in later and add a little more. Um, gray back over a couple of these just to take away a little bit. We'll see what it looks like once I put it together. So let me get these out of the way and cover this little dude back up so I don't stick anything in it. <laughs> um, so you're going to also want to paint. Um, you need two skewers to do this, two wooden skewers. I just rubbed gray paint on them. You can do whatever you want with them. Uh, you can add other colors if you like. But let me just wipe this silver away because I could just see me sticking something in that. That's what's nice about working with glass. You can wipe stuff off pretty easy. I'll go back with a baby wipe and it'll be gone. So that's really nice. Okay. So when you cut these, let me bring back my little guide while these are setting up. They're pretty dry already. Um, you're going to want to cut your skewer at, let's see, I think I cut it at two, two inches. Okay, so, so the arm, we'll call it the arm. Uh, you cut each skewer. You're going to cut it in two inch pieces. So you'll have that. And then when you place them on the back of here, you're going to want to, on the back of it, just take a pencil and measure up one inch. So uh, from the bottom, we'll say this is an inch right here. That's where you're going to put your mark in the center and you're going to glue that whole bit. You can use E6000 if you want. I'm just using hot glue. Um, Cause you want enough of it on the back so that it holds together well. Let me show you this one. See, I've got a lot on the back of that one. This is the one I messed up on yesterday. <laughs> so 
one inch glue, hot glue down the center and put your two inch piece on. That leaves you like a fourth of inch exposed and another half inch to play with when you're gluing it into your center piece. Okay, so two inches, two inch arm. All right, and do that real quick because I didn't do that. I'm going to use a um, pen to measure up an inch, put that little mark in there. Hopefully these were dry enough to flip over. <laughs> I think they are. See, I'm just putting a little mark. Because I want them even. I don't want to just guess on this part. Or you're going to have like one that sticks out way too far or too short. So I hope you guys are liking my farmhouse Christmas ornament series. This is the second one. You can go on my page. If you're watching this on Facebook, you can go on my page and um, see the other ones that I've done. I have several more planned, so a couple Halloween ones too. So we are ready to glue. Let me just grab my glue gun. Just stretch for it. <laughs> All right, let's see. Do I need more glue? Yes, let me grab a glue stick. I can't wait till my long glue sticks come. These short ones drive me nuts. And I like to use the, um, uh, what is that one called? Shoot, Gorilla, Gorilla Glue makes glue sticks now. They're, it's really good glue. Excuse me, it holds really well. All right, so now I'm gonna cut my pieces and I like to use my clippers, um, my metal cutter clippers. Uh, so these are thin enough that you can use that. I don't know if I would use them for really thick ones. So I'm just gonna hold it. See, this is two inches, so right there. And I'm gonna line that up and make them all the same. That one down. I'm use the same one for all, just in case I'm off a little bit. Shoot. All right. So that gives me four. Grab the next one. And oops, sorry about that. Sorry, I'm focusing. <laughs> all right, so now those are all cut and we're ready to glue. So let's start with this one. There's my mark. I'm just gonna take my hot glue right down the center. And glue that in place. And there's your first one. Now you can put a cover like do another one and just, here, I'll just show you. If you want to do back to back, because it is an ornament, you can do that and it'll hide it. Um, I'm not doing that, but there you go. It's the first one. So let's keep going. Just arrange my glue stick up there a little better. Okay, I'm going to try really hard not to slam my glue gun. I noticed I was doing that the other day. I don't know if I was necessarily slamming it or if this new camera just picks up every noise. <laughs> it's a really good microphone in it. More. You can go back in and add more if you want more glue. Like I said, if you use a more permanent glue, they'll last 
a long time. Oh, it's got a lot of glue on that one. <laughs> and I had one extra one in case I need it so all right so now all those are glued you just get rid of these cobwebs they're so annoying <laughs> uh, see they just take everything all right <clears throat> the next thing you're going to want to do you're gonna take a something. I used um, chipboard circle. I painted it gray. You can add rust to it if you want, or you know whatever. There's still a little bit on here. It's gonna be on the bottom. You're not really gonna see it. <clears throat> Excuse me. My goodness. Look at this see, change of the seasons. It's really getting me. <laughs> Honey tea really helps, or honey in tea. Okay, enough talking. So the next step, you're going to glue your pieces on. I'm going to set this aside because I don't need it unless I need it. <laughs> bring these over. You're going to see they all line up. The rest is all on the same side because you did it all at the same time, like in a little assembly line. So that's good. Get these out of the way. You're going to start with your first one. You're going to put glue, a glob of glue. You're going to go to the center. You, you want to find your center. You can. Uh, I don't know if there's an easy way to do this. It's an, it's an inch circle. So I'm going to go about half inch and put just a little mark. I'll use um, my marker because you're not going to see this. Oh. That's not, that doesn't look right. <laughs> Let me just eye it. I think that's more the center right there. Yeah, all right. However you figure out getting centers on circles, go for it. Because I'm really not good at that stuff. <laughs> all right, so we're going to put glue up to the dot. I'm just going to put a little... Glue. I'm gonna glue that on and angle it up. Try to angle the side that has the rust. Let me grab something to put under that so it'll stay. And then you're gonna take your next one. I can't really pick this up to bring it to you. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to see it though. And you're gonna bring that one. Now I'm just gonna check real quick to see my spacing. I don't want to get them too close together. But once you glue them, it's kind of hard to get them off without tearing them. Don't want to do that. I think this will work. Yeah. Okay. That looks good. So let's do that. I'm just going to put it on the back here. It's probably easier. And the more glue you use, I found you have like a little bit more time to move it if you need to. If you just use a tiny bit, it sets up really fast. See, so like this is kind of far. And if you do mess up, you could take your heat gun and remelt. Like that one's too far down. See that? It's messy, but you're not going to see this part. All right, doing this kind of quick so I can adjust. I can definitely tell I'm off somewhere. So let's bring these over. Because the blue is still wet, I can move it. That's a little better. I don't know what it is. It's like, ah, dang it. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Oh, that was hot. All right. <laughs> don't do what I just did. Let's see. 
I'm sure there's a way to measure this out to get it perfect, but it's not too bad. <laughs> all right. Get all these cobwebs off. Make sure they're all angling. You don't have to angle them. You can leave them flat. Like the one I have on the back of my house. Let me show you. This one's flat. Okay. So here's what we have. I can see that. Let me look at this real quick. It's really bugging me. <laughs> Let's see. Is that any better? I could tell when I put it in the camera. Oh, that's pretty good. All right. We're just going to go for it. I think this one might be messing me up. Okay. All right. So that's what we have so far. And okay, that's really driving me nuts. Okay. So now you're going to take another piece of chipboard um, or cereal box, whatever you're using. Again, I painted it gray. And I don't know if there's any paint left on this. A little bit. So I just brushed on some of the rust and I'm going to glue that right to the center. Guava glue. Okay. That's what we have so far that hit all of our glue. Oops. And I noticed that I there's some spots that I missed, but I can go back in with a small brush and put some gray on that. All right, so now you need to decorate the top. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can use like some stars since it's for, you know, Christmas. Put some stars on there, a couple of different sizes and elevate it. I'll show you. Just kind of stack them, make it higher. You can use a bottle cap on it. Um, or how about a snowflake? That's cute. Probably have to rust it up though, or it wouldn't look right. I'm going to use this smaller circle. And then I have a gear. This is a chipboard gear from Gypsy Soul Laser Cuts. Um, but you can use whatever you have. I think, let me try this plain gray one. That might have been too much silver. Let's see. I, I can't decide. All right. <laughs> I'm going to use this one. Just take away some of the shiny. Some more rust. Yeah, there we go. That's better. <laughs> So I am going to, I'm going to glue this on, but I feel like it's not high enough. So I'm just going to take a small piece of foam board and cut it. I need it to be higher. So I'm just going to cut a small piece. Nothing too big. I love foam board. I use it for everything. Dollar Tree. It's a great deal. I do try to peel the paper off when I'm using hot glue, though, because it could loosen the glue. So it peels off pretty easy, usually. So there we go. I peeled it off. So now you're just stuck with the actual foam. i put that in the center. Glue that in. You can paint it gray if you want to. I think I got it small enough, so I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Hopefully. And yeah, that's good. Let me just make sure I got it centered here. See, I just see how you can see that. I would probably take a little paintbrush and paint the edges with some gray, just so you don't see the white, if that bothers you. And now I'm gonna just glue the gear on top. Uh, shoot, I don't have I don't have my white glue here with the fine tip bottle that I usually use. So I'm going to use this Beacons 3-in-1. 
Um, all the craft stores sell it. Walmart sells it. It's really good glue. It dries clear and it, it grabs what you're gluing fast. Pretty fast. So I'm just putting some in the center and I'm just going to glue it on like this. Make sure I lined it up like that. And then I'm going to take a pearl that I painted. They were white and I painted them silver. They are all different sizes. So I'm going to take one of those. See if I can get the sticky to stay. Yes, it does. Still going to put a little drop of glue here in the middle. And put that on. Wow, I'm shaking so bad today. I hate that. Okay. That looks pretty good. So that is my ornament for today. Uh, you'll just punch a hole and put some st um, string on it so you can hang it. And yeah, so you can still see the white. So I would definitely paint, paint that gray. Um, yeah, I like how it turned out. Let me bring my other ones in. Let me just put this lid on. I don't want it drying out. That and this one. And this one. You can put pearls along all of the, of the, um, which we'll call it, <laughs> the blades. They look, they kind of look like rivets. So I think I need to put a pearl in the center of this one too. These jingle bells might work if you make them doll in the center. Those are from Dollar Tree. So I hope you guys like this. And I have more planned. I, the next one I'm going to do is Halloween one. So let me just put this on. It's bugging me. Yeah, that looks better. I might have had one on and it just fell off. That's better. <laughs> All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry, it was a little kind of long. I was a little chatty. Um, but, you know, you can just fast forward through. That's what I tend to do to my own videos. So, All right. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye.